Okay, so we're going to go over assembling the hot parts on the Kia. Uh, you assemble it before you put it up in the motor, makes it a hundred times easier. Here's all the parts. Some tools that are helpful. There's the housing. This housing's coated. There's the manifold and the O2 housing and the wastegate. Okay, assemble turbine housing, gasket, and supplied hardware to manifold. And it's easier if you install the front nuts first, or sorry, the front bolts first. And that will hold the housing in place as you thread in the rear bolts. And the rear bolts, again, you're going to leave everything loose because you're going to need to do final adjustment at the end. And you can see on the rear bolts you're using the Bellevue gripping washer because the rear is a threaded portion and the front is a nut and bolt portion, so we'll use the Bellevue on the nut side on the, on the front. And as you can see, the housing is still loose. You can still wiggle it on there for the final adjustment before we torque everything down. Take the included 5-bolt gasket, the turbo outlet pipe, and the included hardware, and loosely assemble to the exhaust housing of the turbine. Okay, go around the unit, make sure that you use the shorter one, the 20 mil one, on the bottom hole for ease of installation. Just wiggle it a little and it'll drop into the hole and then you'll be able to uh, thread it in. And you're hearing a clicking as it goes in, and that's just the threads getting caught on the gasket. It's pretty common. Don't freak out. This is why you leave everything loose. Just going to go in the first couple threads on everything so that way we can line up the wastegate. And voila, that's what it should look like now at this section. Again, everything is loose. Excuse the dyno in the background. Again, everything is loose for final adjustment. Line up before you torque it down. Okay, on to installing the vacuum ports or boost ports and the plugs into the wastegate. As you can see, here's the top of the wastegate. There's a left side and a right side. 
the way the wastegate mounts onto the manifold, you want to cap the right side, so these small ones into there, and put the vacuum and boost signals into the left side, as you will see right now. These are tapered fittings meant to not leak. You don't need any Teflon or anything on them. The Teflon will burn off in two seconds, being the fact that it's on the exhaust. So crank them right in there. Uh, they will seal. And there you go. Capped on the right, ported on the left. Okay, when you put this onto the mating V-band flange, you'll see there's a little ring at the bottom. That ring preseats the spring, so when it when you connect it, it will push in. You can see how it's pushing in. Uh, so don't worry if there's a tiny gap at first. As you push it in and tighten it down, that gap will move in. And there is a nut side and a bolt side on the clamps, on the V-band clamps, so make sure that you are using the right side. Uh, you'll see there's a pocket available for you to um, fit a wrench around on the bolt side. A little side note, the little uh, stick coating on the bolt, the Teflon coating there, as the nut goes over that, it will seem very hard to spin through. Uh, that is how it's going to be, so don't freak out. You're not stripping it. Just keep going. It'll get past it and lock itself into place. Okay, so now we got it hand tight. As you can see, it still moves around, and we can move the clamp around as well. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the other smaller clamp and we're going to line up the wastegate outlet port to the turbine outlet pipe and clamp it down together. Okay, if you followed all the steps properly, it should look something like this. The next step is to tighten down the V-band clamps at the same time as you're tightening down the rest of the bolts onto the turbo outlet pipe. Check. You're going to keep going around in a rotation from one to the other, making sure that it all tightens down evenly and progressively.
And what you're trying to do is just pull up the slack, make sure there's no gap anywhere between the uh, flange, the gasket, and the turbine housing on the outlet pipe. Not cranking it down all the way, you're just trying to make sure that the gap gets pulled together so that you can properly align the bolts on the manifold to the turbine housing after. You can see as this tightens in, you'll see it pull down onto the turbine housing and fill in that gap. Okay, now that you're done, you can see you've pulled the gap together, and the next step is to tighten down the turbo to manifold flange. Just like putting on the tire, you're going to want to do this cross, make sure it all tightens down evenly and you're not getting caught on threads or anything. Shouldn't really happen, but better safe than sorry. Last thing you want to do is be up in the car trying to adjust this stuff later on. And remember the back ones are just bolts. There is no nut on the other side. So the Bellevue washer went under the bolt head and not under the nut. I'd like to thank the R&D crew here at TurboKits.com. Imagine we used to do this in the car originally before someone looked at it and said, hey, I think we can put that whole thing up as one unit and build it on a bench. And our lives have been so much easier ever since. Just imagine trying to do all this up in the car. Oh, pain in the butt. It's always a good sign that all your bolt holes are aligned properly when you can, uh, after tightening almost every other bolt down on the setup, you can still use your hand to thread in that last bit. Nothing's jamming up on anything. So there we are, all cranked down. Uh, we're going to go over it one more rotation to tighten everything down and make sure anything that's settled gets retightened, and you should be good. But this is what the final unit will look like and you will be able to put that up into the car as one unit. And a good suggestion too is uh, all these nuts and bolts you see, you've seen us tighten over the uh, build of this thing. Uh, after you get a uh, couple heat cycles on the car, go back up in there, uh, be careful, but do it while it is still warm and uh, go back down and retorque everything down. Uh, metal does like to move when it heats up, so retorquing it just makes sure that if anything's moved and loosened up, that it gets cranked back down into its new heated position. And this is how it will go on the motor. Up, up under the axle, and then it should just slip right on and hang on the motor. And then you slip the turbo in after, and we'll, that is also in the instructions. I'll try to get a video of that the next time we get a car in.